red line, great. All right, so this is decoupled Drupal dev on Docker with Doxel doing the dirty work. Or Doxel does Drupal decoupled on Docker. Or something, something, alliteration decoupled. Uh, I couldn't think of a third one, so went with that. I am JD Flynn. In case you don't know me, I am a lead software engineer at a company that didn't pay me to be here. Uh, you can find me on Slack as Dorf. I do streaming on Twitch as JD Does Dev, and on Drupal.org, I'm username Dorficus. A little bit about me. I've been doing PHP and Drupal for for a while. I've been doing HTML since the 90s. I had the best GeoCities in my area code. Uh, I started learning Basic around the same QBasic specifically. Uh, does anybody remember the magazine 321 Contact or even the, the show? In the back of it, they had they they would always have a program that you could write, and that's how I learned how to uh, do initial coding, and also how I learned to hate myself because I could never copy it exactly right, and learn some debugging that way. I'm also a member of the CWG Community Health and Conflict Resolution Team, so if you have any issues there, feel free to reach out to me, but hopefully we don't <laughs> need to wear that hat. Um, so to get the most out of this session, it'll help you have some knowledge of Docker, the command line, Drupal, and decoupled architecture. Also, if you're on a Windows machine, I'm completely useless to help you. <laughs> so what we're going to go over is a basic setup of a decoupled mono repo. For this example, we're using a Drupal backend and a front end is Gatsby. It could be any front end, it could be Next, it could be uh, a view or Angular, something completely different. Um, just needs a little bit of extra customization. I'm most familiar with Gatsby. It could also just be vanilla React if that's, if that's your jam. Uh, but this could be used for multiple things. What we don't cover in-depth React development and setup. So I'm not going to tell you how to set up Webpack or Babel or anything like that. Uh, we're not going to go over the required modules to use for any couple. This is more about the dev development environment than, than setting it up in Drupal. And your questionable life choices. I'm going to let you handle those on your own as well. Uh, because I know that I don't know everything, uh, if there's anything that I'm completely wrong about, please feel free to correct me in a firm yet constructive and possibly compassionate manner. All right, so let's get into a very, very brief overview of Docker. Uh, we're also going to go over Doxel, and we're going to go over containerized decoupled architecture. That's why you're all here. That's the title. Glad we got that out of the way. With Docker, we have to have a picture of the whale. I think I'm required by law to hold it up there for at least 30 seconds. Um, we're going to go over it pretty quick, but I do feel the need to give a quick overview of how Docker works. So Docker is, it's based on Linux containers. This is kind of a bug and insect scenario where all Docker containers are Linux containers, but not all Linux containers are run on Docker. Um, it's based on control groups and namespaces in the Linux kernel. There's a lot to get into there. Uh, we could get really in the weeds, but I'm not going to. There are some alternatives to Docker. Uh, Podman, Rancher Desktop, Lima. Docker itself provides an environment for Linux containers, but it is not containers. It's just a set of our it's just something to tell the containers where to live, especially on Macs or Windows. Uh, it, it creates a virtual machine for the Linux containers to have that kernel to, to interact with. Images define containers. Uh, it, it defines containers, contains instructions on what needs to happen for a container to exist, but an image is not a container, it's a set of instructions to create a container. And containers aren't permanent. Uh, when you destroy or shut down a container, it's gone. Any changes you made are gone. And the next time you spin it up, it'll be exactly what the image defines. And I guess I'm going to flash over these one more time for good measure. Storage can be persistent with volumes. Uh, they allow 
changes to the environment that you're building in or the image to uh, persist after you shut down the container or if you need to rebuild it for some reason, if you store everything in a volume, it, that stuff can stay. Services are orchestrated by Docker Compose, which connects multiple containers to create a larger application. And as I mentioned before, Docker Desktop on Windows and Mac is a Linux virtual machine. It's a VM. Containers only run on Linux, so Docker Desktop creates the, the VM for containers to run in. So even though uh, I'm going to talk about VMs a little bit, I don't mean Docker. When I'm talking about VMs in general, it's going to be like uh, VirtualBox or similar. And I also mentioned before, Docker kernel alternatives. These run Linux containers. I haven't found one that's a one-to-one -one drop in replacement for Docker yet, but hopefully they're getting there. So how Docker works, okay, everybody got that. Um, <laughs> this is a, a typical Docker container flow. So it starts off, your client is what you interact with. Interact with. Um, that's your command line. It could be if you have a GUI. But any of the commands there go to the Docker host, which runs the Docker daemon. Uh, this could be your Linux kernel if you're running a Linux machine, or if you have you know, a Mac, Windows running Docker desktop, it's the virtual Linux kernel. And it connects, takes whatever commands you have, uh, pulls the images. If you don't have an image, it reaches out to whichever registry, in this case, Docker Hub, and then builds the image into a container. Any questions on that or anything else so far? Okay, so about Doxel. Who here is familiar with Doxel? A couple people? Okay. Uh, who here is familiar with Lando? DDEV? Okay, so I, I don't want to say any are better than the other, other than Doxel is better than everything, but uh, that's only because I'm one of the uh, developer advocates, maintainers of Doxel. But I'm sure that with a little bit of customization, this could be uh, transposed into those others, like DDEV or Lando. So Doxel is completely written in Bash. The executable um, fin is a one giant Bash script. Uh, the, the advantage to that is that you don't need to install Ruby or Node or anything on your host machine. As long as you have something that reads Bash, which if you've got a Mac or even Windows now you do, uh, you can run. Uh, it utilizes Docker services, which are Docker Compose, so it has many containers working together. Any command that needs to be run in the container from the host, so if you're using your host machine and don't uh, SSH into your container, just start it with the fin is the command. So fin drush, fin uh, composer, fin, fin. Uh, it's extremely configurable, as we'll see in just a moment. And because applications are containerized, uh, it's extremely portable between developers. So everybody understand what I mean by containerized or is that something, if anybody has any questions, please interrupt me, raise hand, throw something at, well, nothing sharp, but throw something at me. So I'm gonna compare the basic architecture of virtual machine setup and how a setup works with Doxel or Docker Compose. So here's virtual machine. Your infrastructure is your computer, your host machine, your Mac, your Windows, whatever. Uh, hypervisor allows for the virtualization, but for every VM, every virtual box that you spin up has the full operating system, and oftentimes you're only doing it for like one website or something small. So that gets pretty resource intensive. You get a couple of those going and your system starts bogging down. Has anybody experienced that? So with Docker and Docker Compose, still have the infrastructure that's being shared from, um, and the horse machine resources, but Docker is doing this layer of virtualization. Uh, now in Doxel, we've got a couple of shared system services. So every project uses these services. They're connected to it. They can share the same ones. But each project only has to spin up 
a little bit for the CLI, some for the database, some for the web server, Memcache, or Redis. So it's a lot less resource intensive, and it also saves a, quite a bit of memory because these images can be reused. So if CLI 1 on project A is the same as CLI 2 on project B, the image just, it's already pulled, just spins up that container. Any questions on any of that? Okay. So let's get into the actual reason you're all here. Let's, let's spin up something pretty simple. Hopefully a Drupal site. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is just a standard Drupal Doxel setup. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's see if I can. All right. Showing my typing. I know it's small. If I make it any larger here, though, <laughs> every letter is going to take up half the screen. So I'm putting down there fin project create. Name your project. I'm going to do session example. Okay, now let's see if I can pull this up or if that's going to. Uh, what I'm trying to show is that there, it gives you, oh, hey. There we go. So we have a selection of different apps that we can install and spin up. Drupal 10, Drupal 9, Drupal 7, WordPress, Magento, Laravel, Symfony Skeleton, Web App, Grav, Backdrop. Um, also Hugo, a Vanilla, Gatsby, and Angular. Or... If you just want to do static HTML, that's an option too. For us though, we're going to do a Drupal 10 Composer version. And if it fails, it's because the Wi-Fi here is wonky and I'll just hook over into mine. It gives the, the information about what, where it's going to come from, but it's going to uh, go to build. Yes. And I don't know if I can scroll up. So see where it says already exists? Mm -hmm. These are different images or different containers. Uh, the images already exist on my local. So it doesn't have to pull down from the Docker registry. Even though this is a brand new project, all the containers, we, we can still spin those up from the instructions. So it saves, uh, everything's cached. And once you have it, You've got it until you remove it. So while that's going, take the time for any questions or do quiet. I need some interaction here. <laughs> So can uh, you run this when you, you just like you have Docker installed and then you can just run this as a separate script? Yeah, um, to install, uh, doc, doxel.io has the install instructions, but it's a bash command uh, that you just curl the script and it does all the installation for you. Okay, so it spun up. Now, I know for a fact that there's an issue with my computer. It's not a Doxel issue, it's a me issue. So let's see if this actually... Where I have to add in hosts as I create them. It's something I messed up before, but... There we go, session example.doxel.site. Spun up. Clap. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fast. I 
face, but but people tens like this. It would be fine. Uh, it is ten, but the that header hasn't been <laughs> fixed. I think because of the version of ten that I'm pulling in. Now you've got me wondering. <laughs> You had a specific version of 10 you wanted to spin off, would you use the custom get repo thing or? Okay, so an example, I, I told you that I was using fin before everything, so fin rush. Yeah, there we go. Fin rush status, 10.1.3. Mm -hmm. So that, that might be also because I have some saved mm -hmm. uh, TPL files or blocks from previous times I've given this talk that thank you for letting me know I need to update. <laughs> All right, where are we? Okay, so why would we use a containerized set up instead of normal NPM, Composer, etc. commands on your host machine. Any thoughts? Yeah. So you have a consistent environment, PHP and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because reasons. <laughs> There's a lot of them. But reliability is a big one. How many times have you run into issues where it works on your machine but not your coworkers, or even worse, not the clients? Um, Often it's because different versions of something like Node or NPM or Composer or you got somebody using Yarn, somebody's using PNPM, somebody's using something else, uh, and it, it's just not compiling the right way. Like you said, portability. It's a containerized application, can be easily shared among multiple developers. Since Drupal went to Composer, the with the Doxel folder and the Drupal info, if you're not committing your database, which you shouldn't be committing your database, it's tiny to pass that around. So it's really, really portable. Best thing, it's reproducible. Uh, if the environment's the same on multiple computers, then usually if somebody gets a bug, everybody's going to get the bug. And it only uses the resources needed instead of having to spin up an entire virtual machine for every project, which is just hell on your uh, computer and your mental health. Uh, what about storage? So does anybody know about Docker storage? You mean mapping to local, like across boundaries? Well, like binding. Yep. Okay. So there are a few volumes. Uh, volumes are persistent. Volumes are created and they live on your hard drive. And when you shut down a container or services, they, they stick around. There's a CLI home, which is the CLI image storage. So that's where everything runs. Uh, the PHP primarily, but it's a very lightweight Ubuntu uh, image. The project root is everything that your project is. So it mounts to wherever your project lives becomes var dub 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 in the container. And DB data. Anybody know what that does? <laughs> Keeps your database. Okay, so here's the scenario that ties it all together for the actual title of the talk. Uh, here's what we want. And by we, I mean I, because I wrote the talk and you all just kind of have to go along with it. Um, we want a local environment that can be spun up easily by just pulling down a GitHub repo. It needs to be able to serve Drupal. It needs to run the Gatsby develop server, so it needs Node, and it needs to run on port 8000 with uh, top module reloading. It needs to serve the static built Gatsby site. And why not simulate a major hosting platform? Okay, so you ready to give it a try? See what happens? Let's make some adjustments here. And 
this is bugging the heck out of me. It's, I'm getting a little bit. <laughs> the podium is broken, actually. It's going to fracture. I'm getting seasick at my own computer. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to open some files and kind of explain what they do. It's not going to show the the tree up there just for real estate. But Doxel YAML. This file is standard to all Doxel installations. It's a Docker Compose file. You can call it whatever you want, but it's Docker Compose at its heart. So anything that you could put in Docker Compose, you can put in here. The other file that comes with uh, every doxel is doxel.env. So this, I have a lot of stuff in here. Uh, there's a lot of defaults though. So if you wanted to change the name of your project, you could edit it here. Uh, there are different stacks that you can start off with. I'm going with Acquia because like we said, a major hosting provider, uh, but it does have that form, SH, Pantheon, and if you just want no uh, frills, no like memcache, no solar, nothing like that. You can go with just default and it, you'll get your web, your CLI, and your database. If you want to change from doc root to web or web to doc root as uh, where your files live, you can do that. I always set this one because Composer is a memory hog uh, and it just needs to be set. Xdebug is built in but you don't need it running all the time. There is a performance hit when you're using Xdebug. Mm -hmm. So that's what this uh, does. I commented this out because lately, and especially with the Apple Silicon, VirtuoFS is the newer file system management for virtualization, and it is a ton faster than NFS or um, OSXFS, which is really hard to say. Uh, Virtuo, I, I've gotten rid of a lot of extra stuff that I had to kind of make file systems go faster because it it makes up the performance difference. And then different things you could set if you were doing a, an actual project. Change, you can even change the images within here. And I named the virtual host in here because by default it'll use your, um, your project folder. So for where I'm at now, you saw it was session example, but we're going to be going into a different folder here in a second. So instead of having it be Doxel decoupled, we, we've got TC Drupal dot. It does follow me there. So for a project to use Doxel, those are the only two files that need to exist within a .doxel folder in your root. If you do that, if you do fin project start, it'll spin up a basic setup for you. Uh, they could be empty, and if they don't exist, they'll be created. Now, uh, for these also, there are local files, so doxellocal.yaml, doxellocal.env. Those are the non-committed ones where you keep your API keys and stuff that you hopefully aren't committing. If you are, ugh. All right, so as you saw, the Doxel YAML here, pretty empty. But I'm going to make some changes that I've already done through the magic of Git branches. Ah, look at that. So I took what we already have and redefined a few things. Our services, this is the, the top level, defining all of the services comes under here. So for stage two of this, pretty simple, I've got the CLI, which is extending the default uh, CLI service definition. So if we went back, I think that I, I should have access to it. In the Doxel folder, like the root Doxel folder, um, there is a stacks with a list of all your services. And that's web, Apache, or Nginx, or you know, for database MySQL, Maria, Postgres, I believe we have in here. Yeah. 
Um, for CLI, you just use one because it's easy, but you can change that to something else, which you'll see in a moment. Varnish, Memcache, these are all things that are available just out of the box that you can add in. Can you say if you just them, where do you have them? In Doxel YAML. If you don't have them in there, you can add them in Doxel YAML. And so that's kind of what we're looking at here. I've got the CLI service, which is just extending that one that we just took a look at back in uh, Services YAML. But I'm also um, building my own image and I'm serving it a or giving it a separate set of instructions. And I'm doing that with the custom Docker file. So it will use everything, all the settings from that original uh, thing in services YAML, but we have a custom Docker file to, to overwrite some of those things. So let's take a look at that. And forgive me for not having it as PHP 8.2 yet, but I'm just leaving that as is for now. So as I said before, Docker files, images, are sets of instructions. The from is just saying where we're pulling, what is gonna be the base image for this. For this one, it's Doxel CLI. Uh, for Doxel CLI, I believe it's uh, Ubuntu. I can't remember off the top of my head which one. Uh, but it, all the way back, the, the, the top, top, top level one is from scratch, which is absolutely nothing. It's just, you have to have a from there, so it's from scratch. User Docker, little alias that I prefer rather than LSLH. Um, tell which shell we're gonna be using and then set a few things in here. I set to pin a version of NVM, or sorry, NPM and Node. And because I know that we're gonna be using Gatsby, I put the Gatsby CLI in here to come up as we spin it up. So that's something that I don't have to worry about when I have the project running. Then, because we're gonna be using uh, Node, Expose port 8000. Does that make sense or any questions on that so far? Yeah. So, did you configure that like through the initial setup or is that just what comes in the file? No, this is, Sorry. these are my customizations. It. So, it takes all of the instructions from Doxel CLI, okay. that Docker file and then does this on top of that. Okay. So Got it. it takes the original Ubuntu and then we add in this alias to that Ubuntu OS and then th then we go in and we set the version of Node and NPM cool. that we're going to be using. Any other questions? Yeah. Maybe an off the wall question, but let's say you have a container for Drupal 7 and Drupal 10. You want to do a migration, can you connect the two together to do that? Probably. But I, I, I wouldn't do a shared container. I do two separate applications and then use the, the network talk to container to container. Uh, because with a single containerized app, you're gonna have to have a separate database container and a separate uh, web server, a separate, a lot of things extra. So it would be duplicating a lot. But having a two separate apps running, they can still communicate. All right, so back to Doxel YAML. Told you about volumes. I'm setting it um, project root. That's going to be where the project lives. So var dub dub dub. And then we can set a couple environment variables here. I this Doxel env is not required. I put it in there just so I can run some uh, some tests with Drupal and to make sure that there is an extra environment variable saying, hey, we're using uh, settings local PHP rather than settings PHP. Uh, now static here, that is where the static Gatsby site is going to live. So this one extends Apache, see here. And this one, we're going to share the same project root. It's the same uh, volume. Even though it's named twice, it's, it's shared between the two. It's just saying that we want this to have access to the same thing. Labels, I added it so it says static in front of the virtual host. So now it's static.tcdrupal.doxel.site. 
And since we're going to be serving the static site, we can put where the Apache document root is. For the Drupal site, have a separate web server to serve it. Name that web, and just because I like being difficult, we're using Nginx on the Drupal site. Same thing, we're sharing out project root, using the same services, and just using Nginx from, from that stack, and throwing a CMS in front of the domain rather than up off, let's say preview before, static. Then preview, same thing, all the way down. Um, a preview in front of that. Now, virtual port here is saying that instead of going to preview.tcdrupal.doxel.site colon 8000, it's saying that all traffic should just go to 8000. So it makes it a little bit, you save a couple of keystrokes getting in there. And just put the working directory, and it depends on CLI because if you didn't, there'd be a race condition and wouldn't know which one to start first, or if the wrong one started first, then there could be problems. Any questions on that while I'm... Will this repo be available? Yeah. It is, uh, it's on GitHub now. I gotta push up some changes. I'm just checking. I don't think I made any anything different between the two here. So, now if I go fin p start, it's short for fin project start. And it doesn't collide with the other project that you were running, or you never actually prompted the other project? Actually, the other one is running. Um, it's hard to see because it cuts off right here, but uh, I never shut that down. But there, there is the. Let me get into Doxel. To env because you've got subdomains, it doesn't really matter. Well, this uh, compose project name by default it's going to be uh, either virtual host or your do or your your folder name. So compose project name is uh, for this one it would be uh, doxel underscore decoupled underscore CLI underscore one. So every container is namespaced in that way. Yeah. So uh, I believe if I... I didn't want to sidetrack it, I was just curious. Oh, makes sense, where is... Okay, so you can see here I, know, I don't know why it's taking the size from here, but session example one, session example CLI one, session example, that's one that we, we had running a couple minutes ago. And at the same time, docs will be coupled, docs will be coupled. So they're, they're running together, but they're not colliding. Yeah. Okay, so. This one is just something I need to do because I don't, know what I messed up. Yeah. All right, so if we go first, uh, Here, project missing. Anybody want to guess why? Because I prefixed all the domains with uh, web static and or CMS static and preview. So let's look at CMS first. Please work. Oh, I didn't do the site install, I apologize. I think that was the issue. 
can you do that inside of Rock Hall? Inside of Rock Hall, like with uh, degrush, you can actually build this thing. Yeah. Well, actually, what I was getting into there is the command that I forgot to run, fin init, is a custom command that you make yourself. Uh, there's a default version of it, but this is what actually runs all of the composer install, creates any folders that you might need, uh, and runs the site install, which is what I happen to forget to do. So let's run that. And it is a um, scorched earth solution. So fin in it is kind of like uh, Lando destroy type thing. I don't know the DDEV alternative or version of it, but it removes everything and then rebuilds it. Okay. Have you needed much? Well, this is running. You said this thing is portable because you put it on GitHub. But actually, you're putting in GitHub. Is it just a YAML file? Are you putting the containers out there as well? It's still your um your repo, but most of the custom instructions are saved in your Doxel YAML or Doxel ENV file. But it's nothing to do with the container itself. You have to move the Doxel right. and build the container. Yeah, you still have to have Docker. Uh, pull down the repo. Oh, please don't break. Pull down the repo and then run everything. Uh, you know, fin project start or fin system start to get everything spun up. And once you get the container, then you put that up in Docker Hub? No. Uh, you pull down images from Docker Hub. Containers live locally on your on your system. You don't need to share those out. The only thing that you share out is your your code base and the uh, and the Doxel folder should be within that. So everything in that dot .doxel should give the instructions needed to, to build it. Okay, apparently I had X debug enabled somewhere in there, but let's try this again. CMS TC Drupal Doxel site. So we got Umami. Now next thing, I'm gonna run fin. These are custom commands I wrote that are wrappers for um, NPM commands. Gatsby dev. So I know we're getting a little bit short on time here, so if anybody has any questions while while this is going through, I mean, we might as well, well not waste time watching me steer this. <laughs> so, yeah. Does this support like a file syncing or mutagen or something? No. Uh, why is it failing? Okay. Oh well. Um, Virtual OFS for Mac. I found is just as fast, if not faster, than any of that. Oh, dang, I'm pressing the wrong button. But I found, oh, sorry. Unless my train of thought there, but a virtual FS is is faster. I've looked at Mutagen, I've looked at Unison, and I've even rolled my own kind of solution for it, which is something that I had before. But comparing the times, uh, it was negligible, and compared to the time it took to set up the other alternatives to just using virtual FS, not worth it, at least in my opinion.
little bit better luck. I forgot to import my config that had all the JSON API stuff in there. So any other questions while that's going up? So just a little bit about Gatsby since I don't know how much time is left. But like Gatsby is a uh, static file generator that uh, it's technically a static site generator, but it's a React app. It's a React meta framework, so it's built on the React library uh, with its own kind of ecosystem for the big thing. What now? This is a lot normal, it seems to me. <laughs> as far as I'm yeah, it's great. It's good. It's <laughs> okay, well, in a, in a perfect scenario right now, if I were to go to, I not perfect, but best case scenario, if I go to preview here, we're going to see an, either a React error or a Node error. Yeah, on mm -hmm. GraphQL. So it, it, the, the preview server is running. I'm not going to debug this because... Mm -hmm. I haven't changed anything since I ran it last. I don't know what the heck's going on there. And because I know it's not going to build, you're going to just have to take my word that static would go to the, the static built site. But we just get an error. Uh, so, got a couple minutes left. Let's rush through the remaining. You can show like, yeah, what, what does your code look like to communicate with you? So if I didn't grab my pants, it was a win. <laughs> the bar was pretty low, but I think I made it. Uh, so the point of all this, it's configurable, it's portable, it's containerized, it's reproducible. And what did we accomplish here other than going almost full time? Um, well, we spun up a local environment that mimics production, created containers to separate Drupal, Gatsby Dev, and a static site. Again, that third one, just trust me. Um, and we made some memories along the way. <laughs> Any questions in the next two minutes? Put your uh, GitHub. Uh, and I will uh, provide these slides to the TC Drupal site. Um, that's JD does dev decoupled doxel demo. <laughs> and that's all I got.